Today, I'm privileged to be speaking with two modern day cowboys who know what it means to cowboy up in life. Later in the program, I will be speaking with Mo Hedrick, who has worked with such greats as Chuck Norris and many more. But my first guest, Scott Mendez, was the world bull riding champion in 1997. And it's my pleasure to introduce Scott Mendez to the program. Welcome, Scott. Thank you, Miss Teresa, for having me. Oh, it's absolutely <laughs> a delight to have you. I've been trying to uh, get our schedules to coordinate for a while, and I'm so glad that it worked out and you're with us today. Yes, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Well, to begin with, Scott, I would like you to share a little bit more of your background with our viewers and how you came to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Well, uh, you know, the rodeo business is a tough business, and I was really blessed to grow up um, from childhood, um, competing at junior rodeos, high school, and then on a professional level. But uh, I guess if you could kind of wrap it all up in a nutshell, I saw a defining moment uh, when one of my best friends was killed. Uh, up to that point, I thought I was pretty invincible, um, running, trying to find my identity and what it was I was doing, you know, trying to be a top cowboy and a world champion and so forth. But when I saw my friend killed, um, I realized that we were only one buck and shoot away from that being me. Mm -hmm. And I just, uh, I just had kind of a soul searching moment where I remember what my grandmother said happens to us when our life is over. And she explained to me that if I lived my life that was pleasing to the Father, that I would spend eternity in heaven. And if I didn't use my gifts and talents, that I would be escorted to hell. And that day, I tried to live my life by attaining worldly accomplishments and being a good person. And as you know, Teresa, it's just not enough. And so uh, my eyes were open that day. And, and if that was me laying there, I, I would heard the words, apart from me, I never knew you. And that really shook me up. And I walked out of that building saying, Lord, you can have my career, my life. And uh, from that moment on, in 1994, when that happened, mm -hmm. my life radically changed. And I was able to have the confidence that I need to allow him to guide my career in all aspects of life. And so he really blessed me. Awesome. Well, that's 1994. How old were you? Uh, probably young 20, 23 or 24 mm -hmm. years old at that time. And your friend who died, he died right there during a show? Yes, was it he a died live, show? live on ESPN at the oh, Thomas dear. and Mac in front of 18,000. And, and uh, the funny thing about it, Teresa, was I was in position to win my world championship that year. I got bucked off a few minutes later after my friend was killed. I came back in 97 to win it. But I tell folks from, you know, from that December of 94 until the December of 97, God worked on me. I came out of the closet with my faith. I began to believe that I was a, a world champion and a, and a Christian cowboy where before I was keeping it all inside and mm -hmm. nobody knew. So I really became a witness um, once I got the priorities of my life straightened out. Mm -hmm. My goodness, how does a rodeo handle such a tragedy in front of a live audience? How did they handle that? Well, it you know, you're talking about cheering and screaming and, and the anticipation of who's going to become the world champion every year in Las Vegas that comes down to the last three or four guys riding. Of course, I was in that position that day. and. I longed for a championship, thinking that, that that would make somebody out of me and that God could use that. God wanted me first as a person before the championship would come. Uh, so, you know, the crowd goes really quiet and uh, everybody just, you know, a hush goes over the crowd and it's five or ten minutes to get them out of there. Uh, and then you got to come back and ride again. So it was a very so emotional the show has situation. To go on. Yes. And did the crowd know how serious it was, or did y'all kind of keep that from everybody until? Yeah, I think uh, people realized really quick on instant replay and everything like that that he was stepped on. At that time, we really, I can't even remember that particular, we may have had vest on after my other friend that was killed, Lane Frost, mm -hmm. um, you know, four or five years earlier to that, we had vest, but we didn't have a lot of helmets at that time. Mm -hmm. Today, helmets are pretty widely used. Back then, we were old school and nobody wanted to, uh, you know, ride under that um, pressure of being called a cowboy or not cowboy based on whether or not you wore a helmet, but uh, yeah, if he had had a helmet, it, it, it may have helped. But it was a it was a, a, def a very tragic uh, impact that he took that day. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And and so that didn't detour you from going on and riding. No, spiritually it did. Physically, you know, again, I I had I'd indicated earlier in our, in our talk that uh, I, I thought I was invincible, you know, and I had been at rodeos, you know, in the springtime a couple years prior to that. We lost four of my friends oh my riding goodness. bulls. So. 
you know, it, it's like racing cars, and if you hit a wall going 100, 180 mile an hour, you, chances are you could die. And, and bull riding is no different. Mm -hmm. And so um, you want to have everything um, in, in your life ready if, if that was to happen. But um, yeah, just watching that, I realized uh, I'm not as tough as I thought. And I think that mm -hmm. that was God's way of speaking to me. And if that was me, I would miss heaven. And it really scared me because I, I was wanting to do things for God. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, thank goodness for renewing the mind and getting my life right. Yeah. And in an environment like that, such a dangerous sport, yes. we do need witnesses of Christ, shining lights and reaching out because you never know when it's going to be your last ride, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's something. Um, well, Scott, tell us about your experience in 1997 when you won the World Bull Riding Championship. You know, I guess in a, in, a, in a way, Teresa, you know, all that went on in 94, I went back in 96 and I didn't do very good. 95, I had a knee injury that allowed me to be 17th in the world and they only take the top 15. So when I got there in 97, after those years where I had come out of the closet with my faith and um, just took a lot of the pressure off me, it just kind of naturally happened that year. My son was born premature by about six weeks and so we couldn't fly out there. We drove and um, you know, that week I remember he was crying in the hotel and I didn't get much sleep and I was still working out every day, but I just began to ride bulls every day for that 10 day competition. I was able to, to ride seven out of 10 and win a world championship, but um, I, I pretty much felt in my heart that it would come, but I wasn't thinking about it coming. And so naturally as an athlete, I was just kind of in that, in that zone to, to win it and let it happen. But it was a blessing. And I tell folks all the time that if I would have won it in 94, I would have always said, look at what Scott did mm -hmm. and God wanted to reserve that championship so that he could use it on the platform that he's really allow, uh, allowed my family and our ministry to grow under so it's been a blessing but um, you have to totally trust him and allow him to have control absolutely absolutely well you just thought you were a bull rider <laughs> actually you were a rodeo minister <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well we do have a clip of your bull riding day so let's take a look at that awesome he rides with all kinds of big upper body movements. He's a big bull rider. Probably one of the tallest and stoutest in the field. Talking about our young man, Scott Mendez. Every time we run that rope through our fingers and we slap our face and we slide up, you just don't know. Amen. You think you're ready. You pray over your bull and you think your heart is right, but you never know how many people you influence along the way in your life. There's a raging beast in your soul that is dealing with whatever it is, God has already paid the price for our life. You don't have to wait for a defining moment in your life to conquer the beast in your soul. Wow. Now that was quite a ride, Scott. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was awesome. Wonderful. Uh, well, yeah. tell me, Scott, do you know how old the oldest uh, bull riding champion is to date? You know, that, that's a good question, Teresa. There was a man, uh, you know, in the course of histories, and, and one of my heroes was a guy by the name of Freckles Brown. And when the national finals was in Dallas, he was still competing. And, you know, he was 45 years old and competing at a national finals level as a professional. So he's probably the one that's remembered the most for that. Okay. Um, but, you know, through our training camps and our ministry, I've seen guys and helped guys get on at the age of 50 and 55. I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> it's kind of a bucket list, but uh, we, we treat them like anybody else. Once you know the fundamentals of how to do it and you're physically able to do it you can do it but obviously at that age you're not going to go really far they do have a senior pro level and uh -huh. uh, guys can compete uh, with other guys in their division so 
hey, I'm turning 45 July 4th of this year, and, and I probably could ride, but, uh, you know, being able to win a championship and, and have a family in a ministry, I think is important that I uh, raise my family and help others to do it safely. Right, right. So. And I tell you, 55 is going to sound younger and younger all the time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, how young do bull riders start competing? Well, you know, I got on my first calf in California at a branding fire. My dad had a ranch and all of his buddies were branding cattle and they just set me on the back of a calf and I probably rode 20 feet and fell off and had no idea that God could use that. But um, I just did a camp this weekend in Jasper, Texas, and we had six, seven and eight year olds there riding calves. You usually go from calf riding to steer riding and then you go to high school uh, in junior and senior bulls and then you go to an amateur and then you go professional. So you can start off at uh, five or six years old like I did oh my if goodness. you want. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I can't imagine letting my son do that or at any age. <laughs> well, think about it. You know, they're playing baseball at five and six years old in yeah. t-ball. Um, mm -hmm. The stock is really fit for them, but, mm -hmm. you know, they are getting on and you get bumped around. I can remember having black eyes when I was riding calves and, you know, uh, broken legs and different things like that and steer riding. So you, you just got to be tough. Wow. Wow. Well, you certainly have to be called to do something like that, to put your life in danger in any of these sports that are dangerous. Yes. You really have to have that desire, that passion, that drive, and that call to do that because exactly. I don't know any other reason why you do it really. Well, you know, I, I know it's uh, being a cowboy is a way of life. and. The rodeo profession really stems and evolves from the the working cowboy out on the ranch. You got your roping and doctrine and steer wrestling and bucking horses and bull riding. A lot of that is just the um, you know, that's what they did on the Western Frontier. And from the Wild Bill Hickok rodeo days and the Western shows to what we do today at the Fort Worth Rodeo and Coliseum and Houston and all across the world, it's a way of life. And mm -hmm. it's easier for you to come from a ranching family, but you don't have to. There's been some great guys that have stepped up, learned the profession, and done quite well at it. But it, it is to an advantage to be around horses and mm -hmm. to be an actual cowboy makes a big difference. Oh, absolutely. Well, now, I've always... Uh, um, thought that the the rodeo environment in that arena has always been like a family friendly entertainment and a very positive place yes. and have good role models. Uh, has that changed any over the years? You know, yeah, I think one of the things that's challenging with it, um, you know, rodeo is sponsored by tobacco and alcohol and and those things are there. Um, rodeo is a family sport because of the lifestyle. And the, the most damaging thing is when you have a young rider that comes from college or a good solid family structure and he gets out there on the road and all of a sudden it's just like any other sport. You know, you hope that their character is strong enough to carry them to the exposure of the temptation that they're going to have in life. And, you know, for me, when I was 18, 19, after I graduated high school, I went directly into pro rodeo. I didn't go to college. Um, I would have loved to for the business aspect of what I'm doing today, but I had a, a real burning passion to get to the national finals and win a championship. But uh, yes, young men are exposed to a lot of stuff very early, and the rodeo world is uh, its just like a machine. There's a rodeo in every city every night. and um, Really? Every yeah. city? Every oh. night? Wow. <laughs> yes, without a doubt. You know, bull riding is the second most uh, popular sports, um, uh, excuse me, um, spectator sport in North America, only second to NASCAR. I did not know that. It is. Wow. It's a very, a very popular sport. We're from Texas, so we see it a lot. <laughs> but even in, you know, east of the Mississippi or in Montana and California, there's uh, broken up. The United States is broken up into regions, and guys rodeo in those circuits. And then, of course, they come together internationally for the national finals to win a world championship. Mm -hmm. So um, rodeo is popular. It mm -hmm. really is. Mm -hmm. So Well, and we have cowboy churches around here, too. Yes, you know? we do. So, like you said, it's a way of life, and it's a, it's a very... Uh, specific calling it here in Texas and other places too so um, well now Scott you know in some sports there's been issues arise with the names of teams such as the Washington Redskins <laughs> etc now have you ever had to deal with the term the term we call political correctness in the rodeo arena and is anyone offended to be called a cowboy today and is there a certain way they want to be addressed can you believe I have to ask that question or even would want to ask that question? 
That's a good question. Let's, let, let's try to handle them one at a time here. Um, I'm very familiar with the name change of the Redskins and you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in our culture. Um, I personally think the Redskins is a, is a very fitting name, quite honoring too. If you go back and look mm -hmm. at the way it was designed then, as opposed to the conflict they're under now, um, rodeo, it, it, it's such an honor to be called a cowboy. When I wear my cowboy hat in the airports internationally, um, I know they maybe kind of think of you as John Wayne, but uh, they know where Fort Worth, Texas is. They know where Cowtown is. Um, it, it's, a, it's an honor to be a cowboy. There are working cowboys and movie acting cowboys and, and ranchers and so forth. Um, for me, I grew up uh, just a cowboy, a working cowboy, but I got to live the profession, a professional rodeo cowboy. And so um, I wouldn't say that there's uh, too much conflict out there. Political correctness would be, you know, maybe just drawing the line between a weekend warrior, a guy that kind of competes just around a local area that wants to be known more nationally, um, you know, kind of a wannabe cowboy or line dancing. Sometimes we get some of those confused, but uh, in general, if you wear a cowboy, you're kind of held to a certain symbolism. Mm -hmm. and we should uphold that in the American mm -hmm. West. Um, you should know the history and the, the lintage of where you come from and um, it's just a blessed to be American cowboy because we did a lot to settle this country and mm -hmm. we got to uphold that so mm -hmm. it's an honor. Absolutely, it's sort of like a uniform, you know, like our officers wear a uniform, and and, <laughs> and we re yeah, we relate to that, so it's, exactly. it's kind of like that. So, well, okay, let's talk about that Western Harvest Ministry that you have mm -hmm. founded, and tell us more about that. Uh, in 2003, we incorporated as a nonprofit. When I was writing, I had a little uh, motto or a saying on my gear bag, and it was called Spurring with Jesus. And there's actually a scripture, Hebrews 10:24, in the NIV says, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And when I became a Christian, I was like, Lord, if you're going to use cowboys and you would like to use my life and you can clean me up and do so, then go ahead. I just really want to ride bulls for you. And next thing you know, he, um, you know, blesses that. So we kind of had a tagline, Spurring with Jesus, but we came, became incorporated as Western Harvest. Today we hold national speaking engagements, training camps. We formed a Christian bull riding league, and you've been out to our ranch, which mm -hmm. is really a Christian rodeo academy. Mm -hmm. So we help young people to make right decisions, and to uh, our bull riding league is called Conquering the Beast. So we want to help them to understand that um, developing character and having a relationship with God is priority. Mm -hmm. All the sports and the identity and the honor that would come out of that um, is secondary. Mm -hmm. And so we're raising up uh, leaders for Christ in the Western world. Awesome. And I love that, that positive influence. That's so wonderful. Well, now, Scott, I know you also travel down some famous roads and you know quite a few actors. And uh, you've also been on the uh, American Bible Challenge yes, hosted sir. by Jeff Foxworth. Yes, ma'am. And, uh, and you shared about your faith and about the ministry. Yes. Uh, so let's go ahead and watch a clip that shares a little bit more about your ministry, and we'll come back and talk about that Jeff Foxworthy event. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Without a doubt, it's hard to be a Christian in rodeo. There's a lot of endorsement with alcohol and tobacco. There's a lot of stuff on the road that a young man can get exposed to before their character helps them to be a champion. In 1994, I was standing on the back of the buck and shoot. My friend rode his bull right in front of my buck and shoot, and his bull throwed him off, and it killed him. That was really a defining moment for me because when my friend was laying there lifeless, he would never have a chance to ride when I would because I was still alive and able to. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, I felt God's hand on my life, and in a vision, we had the idea for a ministry called Western Harvest Ministries. We work with young people to help them to be better role models or understand what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ while competing in the professional arena. Well, that is an awesome uh, clip, Scott, sharing about your ministry. And I know it doesn't even tell all of the no. things that you're involved, but that gives the viewers a little taste. But let's talk about that night that you were on the American Bible Challenge show with Jeff Foxworthy. How'd that happen, and what, what was that experience like? 
Uh, again, just kind of the favor of God. Um, we had heard that they were holding auditions and they wanted some cowboys to show up and try their hand at answering questions and the profiles. And of course, uh, the two other guys that went with me are kind of rodeo instructors as well, um, both very strong in their relationship with God, good friends of mine. So we went there and we did very well on the written exam and they liked the fact that we all worked with kids and we ended up out in Hollywood that night and we taped a show and uh, we did pretty good. The Women of Faith got us. We had a... Awesome Women of Faith, <laughs> but y'all did good too. <laughs> hey, hey, yes. Uh, they, they were very, very talented, but uh, it was an honor. We were able to raise a little bit of money for our ministry and uh, meeting Jeff Foxworthy was a blessing. Oh, absolutely. I bet he's, I bet he's a pistol. <laughs> I bet mean, he's a pistol. Well, how exciting. Well, uh, now, Scott, I know that you and my next guest, Mo Hedrick, uh, y'all have been trying yeah. to establish a cowboy television network. Is there anything you want to share with the viewers about that? Well, right now, the network, we've been working on that for about the last year and a half. We've got all the incorporations ready to go. We're real excited about that. Um, that right now is heating up very well. We've got some deadlines that we're meeting with our investors and uh, partners throughout the country. Um, that will be coming out very soon. Uh, more specifically, we have been working on our Western Harvest Media. This is a production company that will do some in-house both for our ministry and the network. And so uh, being able to provide original content for the network is very uh, demanding and exciting. And so we are pulling together a very impressive team of guys that have uh, long resumes and many years in the work, just like your next guest. So when we uh, hit all cylinders, I think the world's going to know about it. Awesome. Well, I can see that there would be a demand for a Cowboy Network, actually. So that's, that is wonderful. Okay, we only have just a couple of minutes. Scott, uh, perhaps there's a viewer out there that thinks, you know, if I could just yes. attain fame, that'll bring me the happiness that I'm longing for in my life. What words of encouragement could you offer to them? <sighs> You know, I, I would probably say, Teresa, just like my life, to think that you're going to do something to gain your Heavenly Father's love and, and respect uh, is, is really kind of crazy. The scripture in the Bible says, what is it that a man gained the whole world but loses his own soul in the process? And earthly things are temporal. The spiritual things, I heard it said this way, Teresa, there's only two things that you're going to take to heaven. First of all, your spiritual man, your character, mm -hmm. and friends. And uh, the Lord loves his children and he wants all people. He's waiting to come back now until every one of his children make the quality decision to live for him. And so whether it's through media or ministry or a defining moment, whatever you would choose, he's waiting for you to understand he loves you right where you're at mm -hmm. and we can't clean ourselves up. Mm -hmm. So we want to come to him and allow him to orchestrate the affairs of our life. And he's no respecter of a person. If he's working on cowboys and movies and bull <laughs> Riders, who's next? So he loves you, and he loves you right where you're at. Absolutely. Well, Scott, thank you so much yes, for coming and sharing with thank us you. today. This has been really exciting, and I really appreciate you. And uh, also, Scott is our leader uh, uh, yes. over at our Fort Worth Christian Media Association yes. chapter. We started a chapter there, and we invite you out to that. Come out and see Scott and also Mo. Mo's helping you over there, yeah, and exactly. so that would be wonderful, too. But but we're so thankful for all your accomplishments and the light that you're shining out in that arena, and we really appreciate it, Scott. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Teresa. Right. God, God bless. bless you. Well, you guys stay tuned. We'll be right back to speak to our next guest, Mo Hedrick. Hi, I'm Holly Tucker, country music singer and top finalist of The Voice season four. I enjoy spending time with Teresa. Tune in every week for Teresa's engaging, empowering, and entertaining program. And now, before I introduce my next cowboy guest, Mo Hedrick, let's watch a rolling and find out more about Mo. Howdy folks, I'm Mo Hedrick. And most time you'll see me dragging behind a wagon or falling off a horse or getting beat up in a saloon. I'm an actor and an ex-stunt man, and I've been around movies for the last 30 years. And you know at the base of all good westerns, it was faith-based. The good was good, the bad was bad. You never crossed that line. 
Well, all right, that was awesome. Help me welcome cowboy, producer, and stuntman Mo Hedrick to the program Thank today. Thank you so much. I'm enjoying being here. Oh, God bless you, Mo. We're so glad to have you with us today. Thank you. And to start this interview, Mo, I want you to share with our viewers a little bit about the person you were before you gave your heart and your life to Christ, and then what your life is like today since you've given it to Him. Well, that goes back a long way because I'm an older guy. <laughs> but... Uh, I grew up in a cowboy family, and uh, actually it was like five generations of Texas Cowboys family. And uh, we grew up a traditional going to church every Sunday and that kind of thing. But I never did really understand a lot when I went to church when I was younger. When I got older, God kept grabbing me and pulling me toward the Bible. Read this, read this. And I didn't really realize it. And I would pick up the Bible, I'd read a little bit, and I'd put it down and go away. And then I would come back, pick up the Bible and read a little bit, and then I'd put it down and go away. And uh, he just kept hounding me and hounding me, and finally I just picked up the Bible and started reading, and I started understanding what I was reading. And that's basically how I got into this whole thing. Awesome. Um, but, but God's been good to me. He's mm -hmm. good to me. Um, I've, I've met a lot of good people, and mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I mean, my life's just been great. It's been great. <laughs> that is so, wonderful, Mo. That yeah. really is. That is awesome. Uh, well, I tell you what, I understand that you've been involved in many movies and television shows, such as Walker, Texas Ranger, and so many more. Could you share a few of your most rewarding um, and memorable roles and who you participated with, which actors and which films. Share that with our viewers. Gosh, that's hard to do. Um, when I started out in the movie, I started out as a wrangler, and that, that's the person who handles all the animals. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I noticed the stuntmen would come out, and they'd stay out an hour or two, and they'd draw their check and go home. And I thought, well, I need to do that, and I have to work <laughs> all day, you know. Uh, so I became a stuntman and uh, did stunts for about 20 years. And then I got to realizing that uh, I couldn't keep the jumping and falling in like the younger guys could because mm -hmm. I was getting up in age. Um, so I decided to, to go behind the camera some mm -hmm. with directing and writing and producing and that kind of thing and special effects. Um, memorably, uh, I did uh, several movies like with Kenneth Copeland and their ministries. Uh, mostly because I always played bad guys. You did? <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm not getting those parts now. Now I'm getting the good guy parts. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> but back then, I always played bad guys. Uh -huh. And uh, so um, life was a little different then. Mm -hmm. But the bad guys in most of the movies are the are nicest guys. So yeah. it worked yeah. out fine. And it could be fun. It could, it, it could be fun, fun to play a, a fun. bad guy. One day yeah. I might want to play a bad lady. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And, you know, you, you get to meet a lot of very interesting people. Mm -hmm. You really do. And I've worked with some really great older stars. Mm -hmm. um, Name some of those that oh, you've worked Clint with. Clint Walker, Johnny Crawford, Chuck Connors, Ken Curtis, uh, James Drury, uh, and this goes on and on. Uh -huh. um, of course, in the 90s and uh, 2000s, we did a lot of Chuck Norris movies. I was in 10 I of love those. Chuck Norris. I love yeah. him. And uh, so... Awesome. Well, that quite a quite a quite career a there for you. And so then you got into stunt work. And so, mm -hmm. Mo, I was wondering, are all stunts dangerous? Are some uh, stunts not necessarily dangerous? And if so, give us an example of a, uh, what a stuntman would do that would not necessarily be dangerous. There are no undangerous stunts. <laughs> oh, Everything really? is dangerous. They Everything all are? is dangerous. Sure. Even if you're just standing up and fall down, you have a chance to break something. Right, right. Um, and of course, I work with animals more than anything else. And uh, so there's always that element of you can't choreograph with an animal because they're going to do what they want to do. That's true. And send the time. Mm -hmm. um, and fight scenes. If you do fight scenes with an actor, a lot of times they're not trained to fight. <laughs> so you get hit, you get the, you know, so it can it can be very dangerous kind did of thing. Did that ever happen to oh, you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Do you want to tell who did it? 
<laughs> well, it was. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but several, if you can. Several times. Uh, one of them was Randy Travis. He hit me. Randy Travis, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Oh, bless you, Randy but, Travis. Yeah. We're praying for you. Yeah. But uh, No, he was in Gainesville last night. Yeah. He was in Gainesville yeah. last night. Oh, so, really? Yeah, at a okay. concert. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. He's a great guy. Um, but yeah, every every stunt is dangerous, mm -hmm. and you try to, like I say, you try to choreograph it to where mm -hmm. it's a minimum of, of danger to it. Mm -hmm. But and we use pads and that kind of thing, so it, it helps. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it is dangerous. Well, tell me, what's the most dangerous stunt you've ever performed? Well, for me, high falls are the worst. Okay. Um, I've done things like pull a horse down get shot off a horse, get mm -hmm. shot out of a wagon. Mm -hmm. uh, I drive teams like stagecoaches and wagons and things. But um, I'm I wonder how many heights. people can still do that, Mo, drive teams of horses. There's not many that, not that many. do really the movie stuff. Really? Mm -hmm. Are you mentoring yeah. anybody to take that on, training them to do that? No, because the Westerns have declined so much in the, in the last uh, decade, I guess. They've declined. But now... They're starting to get a rebirth of mm -hmm. westerns, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad to see that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're not getting the young people that want to do it as much as we should. Right, and mm -hmm. and I think we should not let that skill die because we never know. Mm -hmm. We may not have gas available. We may need to go back to some horses right. one day. <laughs> right. You know, somebody uh, needs to know how to drive these yeah. things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me something. How how closely does a stuntman have to resemble the star? And isn't that kind of difficult? It is difficult. Uh, it depends on the stunts as to if they have to look like the person. If they're real close-up stunts, you need to have somebody that looks kind of like the, the star. Mm -hmm. But uh, in general, not necessarily. They need to be the same size, mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. so than the same facial features. Mm -hmm. You know, on, on good shows, uh, I can't really notice that the stuntman's different, but on, on some shows, I can really tell. You, you really know? pick them out. You, you, yeah, yeah, I can really yeah. tell. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've wondered about that. Now, do you have any idea about how many stars like to do their own stunts? I do know Tom Cruise does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's quite a few of them. Quite a few of the younger stars like to do their own they stunts. They do? Yeah. yeah. So I guess when they're younger, they kind of like that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's an adrenaline deal. Yeah. yeah. But I bet their managers, I bet, would they have to have their manager's permission to be able to do that, I wonder? Well, uh, the, the agents and managers don't like them to do that. Right. Because there's that danger there. You know, mm -hmm. and the producers, the same way. They don't want to have to uh, postpone filming because of an injury or something like right. that. Right. So, so it's probably... It be costly. Yeah. yeah. It's probably a, a special treat for them to be able to do that mm -hmm. and special permission. Because I, I can see the wisdom yeah. in that, you know. Uh, well, tell us, Mo, what are you keeping busy with in the industry these days? Well, uh, right now, of course, I'm working with Scott Mendes with the uh, uh, Western Harvest Media. And um, we're working on some uh, pilots now for some Christian films or family-based films. Mm -hmm. Both, both. Uh, of course, we, both, we love Westerns, but we do a little bit of everything. Um, I just landed a part with a, a series called Sundown. Okay. I'll play a sheriff in that. So that'll be coming up in the next few months. Um, but basically, that's what we're doing right now is working scripts and getting mm -hmm. things ready to, to shoot. Mm -hmm. And so now, are you still are you still doing stunts, or have you kind of... Yes, ma'am, I still do you're some You're still stunts, doing stunts? I, just okay. the minor ones, not right, the big ones. Right, right. I still do a lot of driving and, and mm -hmm. horse work and stuff. And mm -hmm. you're also uh, producing now and mm -hmm. directing right. and that type of thing mm -hmm. and acting as, as well. So it's kind of a, you know, I think probably people in the industry, eventually they get there. They're, they kind of get their hands on a little bit of everything mm -hmm. and learn how to do everything and yeah. that can keep you employed a long yeah. time when you know a little bit of everything and can yeah. do everything yeah. but you're probably gifted and skilled at certain things mm -hmm. but uh, well Mo you know what ever since I've met you you've always been such a gentleman and I never even <laughs> greet you without you taking off your hat and I just want you to know as a female I certainly appreciate a man that has tenderness and is polite and knows how to treat a lady and so I was wondering is there such a thing as a cowboy coat and if so could you share with our viewers what that coat sure is? Sure there is. Um, the one thing I'd like to say is a cowboy not necessarily a hat or a pair of boots it's what's in his heart and if you keep God in there too you got a winning combination. Yeah. 
But uh, there's a few things that I, I, I jotted down on paper just uh, okay. so I could share with you and you know, your folks. And um, one thing is live each day with honesty and courage. Um, if you make a promise, keep that promise. Absolutely. Um, be curious. Try to learn something every day. It's not that hard to learn one thing every day, and you'll be better for it. Um, when you start a job, do your best at that job and always finish the job. Um, always be kind and helpful to children, mm -hmm. the older folks, uh, those less fortunate, um, and animals. Be mm -hmm. kind to animals, too, because mm -hmm. they love you no matter what. <laughs> you know. um, and, of course, be respectful to the ladies. Mm -hmm. And like I say, those that are less fortunate because they're the ones that really need it, you know. Yeah. Um, be, be willing to stand up for what's right and, and uh, for those that have been wronged. Mm -hmm. um, be clean in your thought, your words, your deeds, and your dress. And all those are, are big factors. But the big thing is pray every day. Awesome. Thank God for the things that are around you, not not uh, the worldly things you have, but just for things around you, the blue sky, the, the, the water, um, friends, family. Just be thankful for the things around you. Absolutely. That's a big thing. Yes, that's beautiful, Mo, and Thank this you. is the code of ethics that cowboys live yes, by. Yes, ma'am. Awesome, and you know, we just want to keep sharing that. and gaining more ground and you don't necessarily have to be a cowboy to mm -hmm. keep a code of ethic like that yeah. do you but it is beautiful that we can know that cowboys are held and have a code something that they believe in and something they uphold that's wholesome and would be good for anybody yes, anybody at all well Mo this has been so fun I've had a good time <laughs> I'm so time. glad that you came to be well, with us on the program today I really today. appreciate it see there he tipped his oh. hat <laughs> it just comes natural <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> well I like it thank and you. thanks so thank much you. for coming to be with I us appreciate we appreciate it, it. thank you all and we wish you all the best in your future well, endeavors thank you we'll be watching for you, bless you. on the big screen thank you. Okay. <laughs> God bless you thank you Wow, what an inspiring show today. It's been a lot of fun and I learned something new and I hope that you did too. Until next time, happy trails to you.